Hi, everybody, and thank you for joining me today. All right, so we are still working on the clock dial here today, and then heading further down the diagonal. So we shall see if we get into uh, the top of Link's hat soon or not. So, hope you all had some good holidays. Oh. Yeah, I'm not a New Year's resolution kind of person, so I haven't said any, but I have some stitching goals, I guess. One being I'm going to uh, finish my um, Soulful Mediterranean Tranquility uh, going to uh, wash and iron and mount it. I got all the supplies I needed for it at Christmas um, because of uh, for my Christmas gift, but I'm uh, I hadn't got around to actually finishing it because, you know, December is always so busy. So yeah, my plan is to get that done this month at some point. And then I will show you guys how it looks when it's all hung up on my wall. I'm planning to hang it uh, directly across from the uh, front door. So it'll be the first thing people see when they come in. Luckily that, uh, that wall is big enough. I actually finally went and invested in one of the uh, digital photo frames, which, again, haven't got around to actually using it, but eventually I'm going to digitize all our photos and put them on that so then I can, uh, I can take some pictures down and have the space for uh, hanging up projects instead. <laughs> yeah, fortunately I have a fair amount of space that way. <clears throat> Yeah, there was someone in one of the groups I was in who said they have limited space and their stuff's all framed, so they uh, they cycle what hangs on their wall. You know, two, three times a year, they change it out. <clears throat> yeah, or I remember there was one person saying that they don't really have room, so they just keep them rolled up in a closet. It's just the process of creating them that they like. Which, yeah, that's definitely my favorite part too. <laughs> okay, let's actually do this one first. Okay. little scrap pieces of this color left over so hard to find just one <laughs> yeah my last finished project the uh, the geisha ladies that took me uh, about four or five months to get around to uh, to finally mounting and hanging that. Yeah, it's funny in between because uh, one of my friends, she she stitches too. So she came over to visit. She's all looking, well, where is it? Where is it? I said, oh, I haven't done it yet. Because <laughs> uh, yeah, she'd seen uh, the pictures 
of it done, but she hadn't actually seen the, the piece in real life, so yeah, I had to go pull it from my closet to show her. Because, <laughs> yeah, there's just something about seeing things in person that can't really be replicated, right? <clears throat> Yeah, and because I work on 14 count, my pieces are big, so I need a big area to work in. Generally, I clear off my uh, my kitchen table and I put some blankets and stuff down on it and then iron on top of that. So I actually saw somebody had in one of the crafting groups I'm in, they had an old table that needed refinishing, was terrible. So they said they actually went and got some padded material to stretch across the top and so they made basically the table into a giant ironing board. So, okay, I totally want one of those. <laughs> that would be awesome. <clears throat> okay, I'm just gonna pull up these other threads and check the length of them. I think, yeah, that's short. I don't think that's very long either, okay. So what I'm going to do is that means I'm going to carry it all the way over there rather than starting a new thread. Although, I am going to have to start one at some point because there's a lot of this color here. This thread is only medium length, so it's going to run out anyway. <clears throat> but yeah, I always like when I can do a bunch of... Uh, stuff in one go and it goes quick well the upper right hand corner of this design is huge blocks of color so that part's gonna zip right by I can tell that <laughs> In fact, I have to be careful sometimes to do you know a couple of threads worth of the big block and then go and do some detail work elsewhere in the pattern so I don't get to repetitive stress injury. Yeah, I discovered I did one day, I did like 600 stitches and it was almost all one color and my arm was killing me the next day. Well, both of them, but especially my right. And then uh, a couple days later, I did like 600 stitches, but it was all confetti and I didn't because yeah, I guess there's enough breaks from having to stop and change colors and end threads and pull out new ones that, yeah, I didn't give myself the repetitive stress injury, so. Okay, so all this here is kind of in the next diagonal, but if those threads are still on needles, I may stitch a bit more with them anyway, just, yeah. Might as well if they're already threaded. So let's take a look, which I think they are. If I can get them out oh, still threaded, that is. Yeah, there we go. Yes, that's right. Remember this one was one I dropped recently. So might as well. Yeah, again, we're in a area of basically all blues. There was one gray stitch I did, but that was it. Okay, that one's not threaded, so I'm not gonna bother. I think that one is. Yeah, so we will do it. So I say a stitch di diagonally, but I guess it's more diagonal-ish. Because <laughs> it's not always in a perfect diagonal. Okay, so. Alright, I'm just going to check. Yeah, that one's only enough for those two stitches there. So this is the one I'm going to park and carry on. Mm, 
Okay, back to this color. All right, I'll see if that is enough. I think that'll be just the right amount for those stitches I highlighted. And then back over to the left-hand side again. So um, someone I follow on Instagram just posted they did a new start of a uh, pattern from the Cross Stitch Studio and it's over a million stitches. Like, wow. Yeah, I have not tackled any of their patterns yet. They're absolutely gorgeous and so detailed, but yeah, they are huge in stitch counts. Like the ones they call minis are the size of standard ones from a lot of other designers so yeah they're beautiful but i have so many projects planned already that i'm so far restraining myself yeah plus those are they're so big that i think i would have to do them on a uh, higher count Yeah, I had people asking where I get my big pieces of fabric from because I bought a whole bolt, oh, years ago now. I think like 2015 or something like that. But yeah, but uh, yeah, there was a, it was from a seller on eBay, so they're not active anymore, unfortunately. But um, there was another place I had found called fabric.com and then unfortunately they quit selling retail end of November of uh, 2022, so darn. <laughs> yeah, I can't really uh, send, oh, didn't get both strands there. I can't really send people that way anymore. And then uh, there's some places like there's, uh, I think it's called Yarn Tree, but, and they have one where you can buy five yards you know, 60 inches wide by five yards, but they only sell it in the States, unfortunately. Apparently, they said they have a um, an agreement with the supplier and they're only allowed to ship them domestically. So it's like, ah, darn. <laughs> so I went um, on Amazon, actually. It took a bit of searching, but I did find, you can find some sellers who will sell bigger pieces and ship them worldwide as far as I can tell so yeah I have those bookmarked well I have two pieces I'm doing on 18 count right now but one of them I'm still gritting it up but uh, the other one I started the firefly piece and uh, so I may switch to 18 count at some point because it's easier to get pieces big enough for 18 count, of course. Well, they're basically the same size as the 14, but of course, because they're 18 count, there's more stitches per inch. So yeah, you can fit a bigger project on them. Yeah, it's kind of frustrating. It's hard to get. I remember um, when I was a teenager, my fabric store had huge bolts of uh of ada you could buy by the meter and it wasn't terribly expensive i think it was like 15 or even 20 dollars of course this was in the 90s so you gotta adjust for inflation but even i think adjusting for inflation it was still cheaper so oh dear Yeah, so that was a Christmas gift my dad bought me one year. He got me just a half a meter, but yeah, that kept me going for quite a while. <laughs> but yeah, the fabric store doesn't carry it anymore. I don't know why. 
I guess maybe it didn't, uh, it didn't sell as well as they were hoping. Well, I guess on like sewing fabric, right? If somebody buys a few meters of sewing fabric, it gets used up much faster than if you buy a few meters of cross stitch fabric. So yeah, I guess they didn't like having inventory that didn't move as well, so. Yeah, it's too bad that fabric.com quit doing business because it was really nice. You could buy it by the meter and they would give you in one continuous cut. So, you know, you could buy even up to like something like 30 meters at a time if you wanted. So, but yeah, unfortunately, they went out of business, so guess you'd have to be like have some kind of wholesaler connection from some place that does kits or something so many blues here yeah one of my friends just bought a pattern from uh, Heaven and Earth Designs that she said is basically entirely blue. <laughs> There's even parts that look white in it, but they're just a very, very pale blue. So, yeah. Oops. There we go. <clears throat> Stuck to my thumb. I never get sick of blue. <laughs> it was funny when I was still um, knitting a lot, and then I made a sweater one time that was actually red. And then uh, my sister-in-law's like, oh, did you make a mistake? Because everything I've made before then was blue. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, when I was uh, little, my favorite color was pink. And then when I got about eight or nine, it switched and blue's been my favorite color ever since. are going kind of opposite the diagonal so that often means I end up with more threads and switching more often and having to go further down the diagonal to avoid closing stuff in and then kind of work my way back up rather than down yeah some people they work row by row going down very uh, methodically my method is more organized chaos <laughs> See, as long as I'm growing it out from that left edge, that's how I do it. Okay, let's see. 10, 20, 30. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, a lot of these big squares have similar colors, so I have to be very careful not to uh, be working in the wrong place that looks similar but isn't quite the right spot. I have done that before. It's not fun to fix it later. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so I see either way, I may have to do something out of order. Let's see if I can pull this up. There we go. Or let's see if I have a really short little piece. Oh, I do. So that's what I'll do. What I'll do instead. So I'll have a short piece for that one lone stitch by itself. Oh, got a little. Ah. Tied itself into a knot there at the very end. So just trim it. Okay, so I'm going to do these two. Oh, try not stitching my hair into <laughs> my finished piece. Uh, 
Yeah, I actually keep a, a set of tweezers nearby <clears throat> so I can pull out uh, bits of uh, animal hair from my pet. <clears throat> because, uh, yeah, those can really get stuck in there. And because they're short, it's hard to get a good grip with your fingers. Yeah. Okay, and then I'm going to do those ones. Make sure I'm in the right spot. Yes, okay. Okay, and I'm going to park that there, and then I'm going to go back to this color and use up one of my tiny little scrap pieces. Perfect. I hope you all are staying warm out there. I had a cold snap here for a while. I was glad we didn't have to travel because, yeah, man, these storms this uh, holiday season <clears throat> sure kept a lot of people stranded. Yeah, that's why we usually, when we go traveling to visit family, we go in the summer. At least then the weather's generally not making things worse. And if you get, you know, stranded somewhere, you're not gonna freeze. Okay. Oh, I meant to mark that, but I had Pattern Keeper in the wrong mode. Okay, there we go. Been reaching up to one percent per day on this on this pattern that's been pretty awesome okay I'm going to park it sort of right on the grid line there <coughs> so sometimes I split up the blocks of color when they go across more than one diagonal sometimes I stitch across uh, more than one diagonal at once it's just sort of how it happens to work out, depending. Mm. Often depending on what threads I have attached and how long they are. Okay, so we'll do, oh, again in the wrong mode, silly me.
Yeah, so I may stitch a little less monogamously this year. We'll see. So I did that already earlier in the, or, well, last month, but, uh, yeah, I rotated in uh, my uh, huge firefly piece for a few days and did some part that wasn't actually background. <laughs> So, I don't know. We'll see. I may do that each month so I can make a bit of progress on that. Still doing background on my uh, marvelous garden piece. It's white. So, yeah, I'm kind of uh, doing sort of a couple strands worth of stitches per day. That's about, um, well, it's about 100 stitches a day, so... Doesn't seem like much, but you know, when you add it over the, the month, it will add up eventually, right? One stitch at a time. Okay. Whoops. There we go. Unthread that one. Set it aside. So far, it looks like I don't have to reset. My needles are not tangling yet. I don't think this one is very long, if I'm remembering correctly, yeah. But I think I can get these last two stitches up here. Yeah. Before I have to tie this off. So I was at exactly 13% when I quit yesterday. So depending on how much time I get to stitch, maybe I'll hit 14. Well, of course, like I've said, this pattern is 48,000 stitches. So 1% is less than 500 stitches. So yeah. It's doable when I don't have a lot else planned for the rest of the day. But... Okay, let's see where I want to park this. Park this here. This is the closest stitch. I can carry that thread back up when I'm doing the next diagonal. Yeah, so now that the holidays are over, I have a 
PVR full of stuff <laughs> because uh, yeah, during December I watch basically nothing but Christmas movies. So <laughs> my show is just a build up and then I get to binge. I guess that means then I don't really have to wait as long between the fall finale and the uh, the New Year's premiere that way either. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I don't really remember when fall finales became a thing, but they weren't as much a thing when I was uh, younger. I mean, they would take a break over, you know, the holiday season because your ratings would fall if you didn't, but they didn't really deal with, like, cliffhangers and stuff. It was interesting because I actually read that... Um, Leaving things on a cliffhanger does not make viewers more likely to watch. Or if they do, all they'll do is watch the premiere to see how it ended, and then the the viewership will fall dramatically after that. So, But it's sort of become the standard. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of cliffhangers, I have to say. Oh, I was really teed off once when I was reading a suspense novel, and... He didn't say anywhere on it that it was a series book. So I had no idea that it was the first in like a trilogy and that I wasn't going to get a proper ending. So yeah, I was not happy when I got to the end of the book and it wasn't the end of the story. Ugh. Because it was a romantic suspense and usually they don't leave those on cliffhangers unless they sort of tell you they're going to. So yeah, I wasn't very happy. Okay, I'm going to do, I'm gonna sort of split this up, I think. Let's see, oh, actually, yeah. Although I'm still gonna do it with one thread, so. I'm kind of taking a slightly different path here.
when I do that. Generally, I'm more likely to unthread my needle when it's a shorter piece, not a long one like that. some other colors coming in here it looks like though they might still all be blue <laughs> Super bright electric blue. <laughs> yeah, I used this color before in my uh, Northern Lights one. I think I'm going to be using it on the uh, peacocks because there, there's some quite bright, vibrant colors in that pattern. Yeah, one of my friends loves peacocks. She said, oh, I wish I could afford to commission you to do this one for me when she saw the pattern I bought. She stitches too, but said she hasn't tackled a huge, any huge pieces. That one's over 306,000 stitches. So yeah, it's definitely big. <laughs> See if there's anything left here to park. I think there will be.
Oh, I did not have to reset. Yeah, that's usually what happens is by the time I'm getting too many needles, colors get finished off, so then I don't have that problem anymore. Yeah, it's interesting. I found working on the 18 count, I have to be more careful not to split the uh, fabric with my needle, but I also find I don't have to work as hard to get the stitches to lie uh, flat and untwisted than I do on 14 count, so that's kind of interesting. I'm using two strands on both, so... Yeah, I guess with 14, maybe there's more room for them to... Uh, to get twisted as opposed to the 18. But yeah, the holes are smaller, so it is easier to accidentally split the fabric when you're not trying to. Well, we'll see. I have like 16 count in the past, but I find that's even harder to get decent sized pieces. So I haven't done a lot of work on 16 count. Well, I have one that I started. It wasn't as good of a pattern. The, um, the symbols were kind of blurry and I mixed up a couple of colors before I caught it. And I had done like three or four pages before I realized that I'd done one in a sort of yellowish color and it was supposed to be blue and ugh. So... <laughs> Yeah, that's been sort of sitting in the closet abandoned ever since because, yeah, picking out that many in a full coverage piece is not fun, so. It was actually another one that was made to look like Northern Lights, but I wasn't, yeah. <clears throat> I ended up buying a completely different one from a, a good designer. <laughs> yeah, bought it from one from RDC. And I didn't have an app then, so I stitched it from paper, but yeah, those one had nice clear symbols. It was not a problem at all. <clears throat> and back when I stitched from paper, I always um, enlarged it, so it was uh, meant to fit on an eight and a half by 11 page, and I would, I would uh, enlarge it by 30%, I think, and print it on an 11 by 17, so. That made it even easier to see properly. Yeah, I don't think I would be willing to stitch from paper ever again. I've been very spoiled by having an app do all that work for me. That is for sure.
was saying earlier about the cold snap, I feel bad for people who are in places where they're not used to this kind of cold. <clears throat> like I said, it got colder here, but, you know, our houses and our infrastructure are built for that much, for that kind of cold, so we don't end up with, you know, power outages because everybody's trying to heat their house. And the houses are properly insulated, so, yeah. It still sucks, but at least we're... We're built for it. <laughs> yeah, I feel bad for people who live in a place where it's not. Like when they had that big Texas blackout, my gosh. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna run out just as I run out of stitches to cross a lot. It's just fine. Perfect. Right, and back to the left again. Okay, I can see I'm going to end up with more than one thread for this color, I think. It's kind of going in two paths there. Oh, my gosh. There we go. It's funny, sometimes I'm, I try so hard to thread it without trimming it to save time, but then I have to fiddle with it for so long trying to get it to go through the eye of the needle that uh, it would have actually been less time if I just trimmed it. <laughs> uh. there. Speaking of splitting fabric earlier, just did it again.
scissors. There they are. Okay, so I have a new thread there. Oh yeah, I think we're getting back into the uh, mask salesman's clothes here, so that's why we'll have different colors. <clears throat> oh, stretch a little. <laughs> yeah, my uh, my neck was really hurting over the holiday. And unfortunately, of course, it was uh, hurting the worst over the days that the office was closed, the chiropractor's was closed. And then it got better, so I didn't have to go in after all. Yeah, the, uh, the cold snap made it worse, too. Increases the joint pain, unfortunately. That is another one. Yeah, I decided I was going to add another thread. Almost lost my loop there. Okay, there we go. I think this one, yeah, we're going to tie it off. Let's try not to. Knot it up. Pardon me. Oh, okay. Oh my gosh. Speaking of fuzzy ends, there we go. Oh, this one is not a blue, it's a purple. Light purple, 38, 36. Yeah, 
wonder how far we'll have to get before we get our first zero. Yeah, my last one I had to get through halfway before I got to my first zero, so we'll see. This area I'm going to kind of stop before the diagonal because, yeah, there's these stitches here, but then I'd want to do those stitches above it, which means I'd have to go further and further into the next diagonal, so I'm just not going to. So I'm going to kind of stop here, and it might be a little more square. <laughs> That's okay. Like I say, I stitch diagonal-ish, not strictly diagonal. Hundred and ninety five. Nice, we're almost halfway through a percentage point. Stop it on a nice even 200, I think. I didn't do a full 200 in this session, but I think I'd done about 40 or something before I began filming, so. And this one is too short to park, so. We will tie it off. There we go. All right. Okay, 200 even. So as usual, um, thanks for joining me today. And I hope to see you here again another time. All right, thanks everyone. Bye.